Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Make a joyful noise, oh ye people. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. You may be seated. Amen. I am so, so delighted to be here today to celebrate. Hallelujah. Today is our annual Thanksgiving. And it so happened also that we are giving thanks for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, you will never depreciate. <laughs> Somebody's not excited this morning. <laughs> Turn to some other person and say, your health will never depreciate. If you know and you know that today is a day that the Lord has made for you, look at the third person and say, My wealth will never depreciate. You know, when you experience depreciation, depression is not too far from you. Depreci depreciation gives birth to depression. Depression introduces the spirit of suicide thoughts. But because we are not oppressed and we don't have anything that we ever depreciate. That's why today we've come before the throne of grace to we'll say thank you to God. And I want you to know that in our appreciation, you have to understand that it must be a lifestyle not just once in a while paul said do this once and again hallelujah heavenly father lord i ask that your spirit envelop this congregation in the name of jesus as the world will come may it come with so much precision grace and power may i not be heard but you be heard may i disappear that you may appear i pray lord that we be not just the hearers alone of your word but the practical doers of your word as i delve into this love book of yours sent to us i ask oh lord that let the text become life let revelation hit the text let everyone today receive that that you have put inside of them in the name of jesus hallelujah i'm gonna be speaking on the topic of caption thanksgiving by faith thanksgiving by faith we give thanks for all you've done for we know that you will see us through are you with your bibles lift them up say this is my bible this is not a phone 
This is not an electronic. It is the word of God. It is the infallible word of God. It doesn't fail. It has been tried and tried and over tried. It has always proven that it standeth sure. In this word is written everything that has to do with me. In this word is written my destiny for it says I will never be a destitute for in this world my life is built on a solid rock somebody say believe in me amen hallelujah can we worship a little bit <laughs> on the hills far away stood an old rugged cross are the singers in here or they are seated or they are standing Come on, let's just rise and worship him. Thank him for the cross. something to exchange today <laughs> he said come unto me all ye that are heavy laden with your burdens and everything he said come come and learn of me come and drink of me shetabaradabo shatabaha cling to the old rugged cross And the change someday for a crown. Take it from the top. So the whole. Yes. The end. Claim of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. And I love that old cross. Let and spare for a world of, of sinners was slain. Come on, sing that song from your heart. So I'm Someday. 
I will cling to the old rock and cross, 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 cross. And the change it someday. Ha! Kabosha! I will cling to the old rocket cross. In Aramoko Baradabo Shadaba. And the same did someday for a crown. Oh, Panted for a soul, soul and it all after thee. You alone are my heart, desire. And I long to worship you. You alone. You alone are my strength. My Come on, let's go, let's go to you. You alone, 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 you and I alone, to worship you and I and I long to worship Just welcome his divine nature upon yourself just say father feel me lord feel me lord your grace feel me feel me oh, 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 oh. just ask the lord to feel you tell him how you pant after him Lekobo shata da 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 mami Soto kobra hadosh Brenda Bosch Somebody say you Say you alone Are my strength I see Say Stop. 
Come on. Give him praise. Let the living praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you know that you got breath inside of you, and you know and you know it that you are standing here today not by your strength, not by your ability, not because you think you can be here today, but by His grace. You are here. Give him praise and give him thanks. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye bye. You ready? So long, bye bye. So long. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. Hey. So long. Bye bye. Yeah. Hey. So long. Bye bye. Yeah. So long. Bye bye. Yeah. So long. Bye bye. You are. Let's go. Want to go? You are that God of miracles. You are that Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. We'll, we'll come back to that. Let the instrumentally settle down. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. We, we, we did it all. Tell somebody we did it all. You know, there is no department in the church I've not worked. Uh, worked in all departments, both security, then to praise team, then to accounting. So, you know, when you are built with this kind of experience, tell me, why wouldn't you be a very good administrator? Hallelujah. Whatever you've got inside of you, definitely will find a way to express themselves. That's why I tell people, I say, go through your process. Don't complain. There are certain things you may be doing today. It looks so troubling. You get so bitter and so angry. But watch you. In five years, that same experience that you complain that you don't like, is what we put food on your table so nothing is for a waste even your trial times is not a waste for it worketh also for your good hallelujah glory to his name we are going to go back to what we've got today you know when we talk about thanksgiving i've dealt on this topic for a very long time now with us 
and i've said to us that thanksgiving is not just because you are in church it's not a religious statement hallelujah it's a lifestyle whether you are a believer or not thanksgiving is a very strong process of showing appreciation first of all you start with the humans you can see first of all as a child as a baby you start with your parents because your parents are the first god you ever saw with your eyes your first hero your first superman your first wonder woman is your mother your first superman is your is your father but you see we appreciate them we give god thanks for them when it comes into the level of when it gets to do with god we dip ourselves in total surrender to him do you know that god expects our thank you you think he doesn't expect he expects you to come back and show appreciation to him is there anybody here that is a kind of person that just want to give to people and tell them don't worry just take and go even though you are not giving because you want to gain something you are giving because you want to help but when a wrong attitude returns back to you does it encourage you to give again naturally it does it why because we are made in the express image of god jealousy is not bad there is nothing wrong about being jealous <laughs> jealousy is part of your nature as a human being jealousy is another fashion of saying oh i appreciate what this person has my god i wish i got this too now where jealousy becomes destructive is when it goes to the extreme for the bible said that knowing not that our god is what so if god is a jealous god <laughs> you too you have jealousy inside of you but the jealousy of god is not that of destruction is that of rebuke to remind us that he is our god so be be relaxed if you find out that you're being jealous you're jealous because you own something you want to protect that thing God wants to protect us the same way also we got to understand that everything that has to do with our lives is what is in God that we are exhibiting apart from sin that came during the fall of man hallelujah and I want you to know that saying thank you should be part and parcel of your every day i don't mean one week i don't mean in one day i say every day of your life say thank you to people even those construction workers that are under the coal working nothing is wrong in just breaking a little bit close to them i just wind down your window and say thank you for walking the problem with today's people is that we have this sense this mindset they are working for their money if they are working for their money mr and mrs why don't you also go and get that construction job and walk and be paid a job is not a job because a person is doing it first of all they must love what they are doing 
before they are they will be they will be working and be paid for it so when you have people that don't appreciate those are the people that by the time you talk to them the next thing they turn back to you and say to you what's my business you're doing your job why do you expect me to say thank you but we are not those kind of peasants the reason why God has placed us in this strategic place is to teach people how to be Christ like and how to be Christ like first of all starts within you the change you want to see the change you want to see must first start from you don't complain about the politicians you are the first political person of your own life and the first prime minister of your own destiny praise God why is my mic going up and down you know you are the first prime minister of your own destiny so how you coordinate yourself affects the community that you are in and we got to thank God and show great appreciation I'm going to show you from the scriptures that God expects you and I to return. You would agree with me that there are many that started this year with us and screamed Happy New Year 2021 that are not here today. Thousands of them. All over. Some are right now in the hospital battling for their life and another year is about to come. Now the question I want to ask you or you should ask yourself what is special about you? I don't know if you've ever asked yourself that question. Just pause and ask yourself what is even special about me? It is not because those that have died are not righteous. Sometimes they live a clean life more than many of us. Void of offense. That's why I say to us, it is not because of your righteousness. And it's not because you are a tighter in the church. It's not because you give money to the church because you can't bribe God. It's not because you have a pointed nose and the other brother's nose is like flat boots. May say this flat boots. And you must understand also it's not because your skin looks like you poured chocolate on yourself. It's not because you are white or black. It's not because of your genotype. It's not because of the kind of clothes you're putting on. It's not because of anything at all. But you must understand that God just decided to keep you for his own purpose, not yours. Do I have a witness in the house? You are standing here today because of his purpose over your life. The Bible says, let him that standeth take heed lest he falls. Don't brag about anything. When you come before the Lord to show thanksgiving and appreciation, lay it all before him. Don't try to hold anything and say, you know, I, I, I work hard for my money. The book of Luke chapter 17 Luke 17. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke 17, verse 11. Verse 11. We're going to be reading down to 16. 
and um, take it down up to up to 19. And I'm going to read one verse and you take the order, all right? You ready? And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12, everybody want to go? Verse number 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 14, everybody. Verse number 15. And one of them, remember, it was ten. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with what a loud voice glorified God. Verse 16. seated the bible started off this story by introducing to us that these men were 10 lepers and you know in those days if one has leprosy they are forbidden from coming close to the to the city they are asked to stay outside the gate of the city they are not allowed in because they are leprous. The situation of this man has become so worrisome that they had no other choice but to look up to God. And remember, in those days, there is nothing like medication for them. If you have leprosy, you are done. It's like the coronavirus of today even coronavirus is now having some form of medications or whatever but this time there was nothing at all for them because anyone with such kind of disease is just sanctioned to die the bible said on this wise jesus was passing through right there in jerusalem and he entered into a certain village that has no name there met him the bible said ten lepers and when they saw jesus the bible said they lifted up their voice and shouted and said unto jesus oh master have mercy on us just like some of us at some point in our lives shouted out to the lord at midnight and say lord have mercy and help us help me through this struggle some of us went even further to make a personal pledge and vow to god that up till today you have not fulfilled it father if you do this i will do that and i will do this and i will do this and i will do that the bible says he is faithful in all his ways even when we are not faithful he abided sure forever They rushed to Jesus expecting healing and expecting a touch. And suddenly Jesus said to them, looked at them and gave them a prophetic word. He said, go and do what? Show yourself to the priest. Now, by this time,
Now, by this time, you dare not go as a leprous person to show yourself to the priest. You, you will be beheaded. Because it's an abomination. And in, for them to be healed, Jesus said to them, you got to go show yourself to the priest. It was a prophetic word that when they obey it, it should lead to their healing. And Jesus knew what he was doing. And suddenly, they obeyed Jesus on their way going to the priest. The Bible said they were all healed. Suddenly, leprosy disappeared. And in verse 15, the Bible said, And one of them, when he saw, so every one of them recognized that they've been healed. When he saw, that he was healed he what turned back what we are doing today is to turn back is to turn back and with a loud voice glorify god if that bible is not a borrowed bible underline those words if you have a mindset that you can't stand up to testify of God's goodness from January to December. Ah, you are the chiefest of all ungrateful people. Chiefest of all. Do you know that certain things we take for granted when it happens to an unbeliever? You will see the way they will run down here and roll on the floor and give God thanks. But today's church believers, even when the spirit is moving them to roll on the floor, rolling on the floor is an expression of thanksgiving too, if you, you must know. Prostrating straight on the floor is a sign also of worship and thanksgiving. Now, even when the spirit is moving you to roll on the floor and give God thanks, you will first of all look at your Gucci shirt. This clothes I'm wearing, I cannot. And the voice is saying to you, roll on the floor and give me praise. You say no. Why will I roll on the floor? For who? You know why? Because that mindset tells you that if you roll on the floor, you're rolling on the floor for the pastor. Oh, no, I don't want to roll on the floor because my friends are here. I don't want them going out about in the city and saying that I'm gone crazy. And maybe snapping me, watch, snapping me or videotaping me and sending it to other friends so they will not mock me. So because of that, you withheld the praise due unto God. I have, I'm, you know, this is my 20-something years as a pastor. I have seen people, not joking, open their mouth and tell me and say, Pastor, I can't testify because I don't want people to know what God has done for me. Both here in Canada, in fact, let's not go far in this church. You, 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 pro, you are, you are securing it. Thanksgiving and appreciation and testimony is not meant for you alone. Testimony is a form of ministration to guarantee the next person in the congregation to make them know that they are the next in line for a miracle. So when you withhold it. You are withholding your future blessings. So the Bible said that this man with a loud voice don't mind how people will view you. That is none of your business. Am I communicating with somebody? Don't disturb yourself. If I decide to come here and sit on the floor yeah like this is it not my father's house 
and i'm giving him praise and i'm saying to him and say father i thank you and i roll on the floor use my knees to walk is he, doesn't he deserve it what is this There are people that all their life from their glasses down to the pairs of shoes they wear is gold plated. Today they are in the mortuary. They go, they stay in the house. They are in the mortuary. Have you ever gone to the mortuary and you see a, a corpse that is being dressed? Because the man loves gold. So they must make sure he has his gold on things are nothing some of us even vowed to God that father if you bless me with a house in this Canada I will put a room special for you where I go to pray hello the house has come that room has been converted to visitors room oh lord if you give me a car I love driving and listening to the word of God Today, Beyonce is your best friend. And Bob Marley, your companion. Everything you do turns around to tell of your attitude towards God. Touch your neighbor and say, are you hearing this? maintain a mindset of consistent thanksgiving wake up in the morning father thank you for the breath of life some of us act like we are the licensor of our own life like we determine what will happen to us you know when you're talking to somebody say you 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 can't control me nobody's going to control you Come to church, you say no. Go to church, you say no. But when they die, they want their funeral to be held in church. Many wants to come to church as dead cops, not as living beings. Haven't you read? The Bible says, let the living praise God. There was a man who were trying to evangelize. Come to, come to church. And one of those days, I warned him, I said, listen. <laughs> Is either you come with your own legs or six hefty men will carry you one day to church. He was saying, now it's not the right time for me to serve God. Pastor, when I'm ready, I will. And when finally he died, the family came to me and said, come and perform this funeral. I said, I'm not coming. And don't bring him to church. He refused to come to church as a living man. Why bring a dead corpse to us? Are we vultures? We don't eat dead bodies. God has no need for that body. It's sand and dust. You know me, I can be very, very somehow, sometimes. I told them, I said, I'm not doing it. You won't beat me. Hello? Eh? If you get so angry, pay transport and come to my house. Come and beat me. I will not do it. Serve the Lord while it is day. For the night cometh, the Bible says, when no man can walk. Everybody will always have a night hour. How you keep your day daytime is how your night will look like. Out of ten, only one and there are still this kind of people in the church out of 10 only one taught it okay right to return back to god so meaning jesus was still standing where he was standing he didn't move when he told them go show yourself to the priest they move like from here to three poles away. They were healed. 
the, some of the rest of the nine just continued only one came back and i will show you in verse put the scripture up in verse number 16 see his attitude first in verse 16 number one he said and fell down on his face are you seeing that with me he prostrated he fell down on his face at his feet at whose feet giving him what and he was a samaritan he wasn't even a believer he was not a jew the, the, the those that are the jews they feel like they are entitled after all we are god's people yes am i not a child of god i'm a child of god if god has given me blessings and bless me that's what god's supposed to do but the man that is not born again that has no covenant with god is the one a samaritan was the one that came back displayed all these abilities inside of him of gratitude and said thank you jesus just one the first he came with a loud voice which means he drew attention of everybody he wasn't in, in the secret stop the nicodemus kind of ministry in the church your name is not brother neko or sister nicodemus stop that ministry it doesn't pay with a loud voice with a loud voice he glorified god and he fell down on his face some of us have not fallen even when the pastor said kneel let me pray for you you are kneeling but in your heart you're standing so arrogant so full of ourselves when you come to god filled up already why are you here and when they're saying feel my heart see to you now glorify you are singing the song but your heart is occupied already christ can't come in some of us have already used vacuum to vacuum jesus out of our life he is already off the only trace of that christ was here before was the aroma of his his perfume was just is just still hanging around but the person christ is gone why attitude how we see christ i tell you of a testimony five years ago one of my uncle's wife she i mean she may be watching right now she is a woman that she lost me so much so when she was ready to put to bed i gave her a prophecy about her son and the day she was to put to bed she said i should come i said no i'm not i don't need to come god has already done it for you she went there it was successful but why she was there something happened there was this woman by the side of her bed that gave birth through sears and the child the life of the child is on the line and she said somehow she heard the woman at midnight crying because even with the pains of the seers the woman the doctor said the child has little chance to survive they put the child in the incubator and she heard the woman crying she asked the woman what's up the woman said everything to, to her she said i don't know what i can do for you you're a woman like me but i have my husband's brother he's a pastor and god uses him i will call him to come tomorrow morning if you will believe he will pray for you she said okay so when she called me i came the following day in the morning by 10 o'clock when i got down to the hospital i went to the woman 
I asked her what's up. The woman told me everything. You know, my style, as I lifted up my hands and say, in the name of Jesus, the Lord said, do not lay your hands on her. For my hand is upon her. I took out my hand. I said, woman, who are you? She said her name. I said, no, no, no. I mean, what have you done? I, I told her straight up. I said, because the Lord said I shouldn't pray for you. It's not Satan that is holding you. It's God. Some of us don't know that certain things that happen in our life is because the hand of God is mighty upon us. Immediately she heard the Lord said I should not pray for you. She burst into tears more and screamed loud and was crying. She said, Pastor, please. I said, I am willing to help, but the Lord said his hand is upon you. And I started telling her, I said, please, ask God for mercy. I don't know what has happened, but ask God for mercy. So while I lifted up my voice and worshipped, the Lord opened my eyes. I said to her, I said, you made a vow to God during your last pregnancy before this one. Remember, woman, she said, yes, she vowed to God because they said the child has, had breached. Watch this. The child breached when the child was ready to come out. And the doctor said, we have to cut you open. She said no, that she will not be cut open. She was having labor, but the child was breached. And they kept pushing, pushing, pushing. She said she was crying and she made a vow to God. And said to God, they said, Father, if you deliver me and this baby soundly, without any complication." I will use my voice to sing praises to you and I will worship you all the days of my life. She never knew that an angel took note of it and flew back to Baba God. And she said immediately she said that in two minutes, the baby, like a, 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 you know, in a hurricane, turned with force, pained her so much and the doctor checked, touched, I said the baby just positioned with the speed of light. Strange. She delivered that baby without a cut on her. After the baby was delivered. Sister, I will give praises to you and use my voice to give you all thanks all the days of my life. Forgot about her pledge and her vow. So when I reminded her, she wept and wept and I said to her, I said, we are not praying against any devil holding you. We're going to just pray for forgiveness and mercy. I give all glory to God that God answered her prayers. And I told her, I said, the baby will be out of incubator in three days. And in two days plus some few hours, they brought out the baby. I said, the baby did miraculous recovery. The Bible said, do not be in a haste to alter words. And he that has made a vow must, it's not by choice, you must keep to it. It's better that you didn't say it. And you said it. You are now bringing politics to play with God. Father, I don't have time with you now. I am so occupied. Ah. You know, I will only do my work as a pastor. And it stops there. Right? Let me show you what Jesus said in verse number 17. Put it up before we round up. Verse number 17. Verse 17. Everybody wants to go. Read that. When they not 10, please. Who was asking, please? Is that Peter? Is that John? Jesus himself expected a comeback. Didn't I pray for 10 of you? Where are the next nine? Verse 18. Everybody want to go? You see that? 
you see that that's why there are less of miracles in the church today because people don't testify there are less of miracles in the church today because people don't give God thanks the church has stopped worshiping the church has stopped testifying before they testify they want to know the the level of the church before they testify they want to know who will be listening before they testify they want they, they want to scrutinize the church before they give their testimony on gratefulness verse number 19 this is the healing of the man that's why some of us we 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 experience healing and suddenly after a short period of time the same illness comes back even in hundred folds and he said unto him jesus was speaking he said rise go thy way thy faith had made thee whole thanksgiving by faith thy faith the man had faith not in the miracle but in christ that's why he returned back the glory to christ I've seen people rise up, come, and they rise up because they fail to acknowledge God. They are brought down. What will keep you at the top? If you can write this down, write this down. What will keep you at the top and you will never come down? Is number one, faithfulness. Faithfulness unto God. Number two, consistency in giving you want to be at the top live a life of consistency in giving not conditional giving giving indeed look at me everybody when somebody wants to receive something from you how do they put their hand give me a demonstration they do their hand like this and who comes at the top the what the giver so everyone that gives is at the top and everyone that receives you will choose where you want to belong this is no this is a principle number three right number four number three live a life of consistent thanksgiving number four According to Deuteronomy 28, acknowledge God that He is the source of your prosperity. Number five, honor His servants agents that he has sent to you honor them by the hand of the prophet the lord delivered the children of israel by the same hand of the prophet he sustained them when you don't have a prophet over your life you won't profit honor them for they are a contact and a source God uses to break certain things in your life. Even things that you can't see. Things that your money cannot help you in. They are the source God uses to break those things. And to speak certain atmospheric grace over your life. He that giveth a prophet a cup of cold water shall receive a prophet reward that is what is called the prophet reward jehoshaphat declared say believe in the lord your god say you shall be established believe in his prophet say you shall prosper so prophets are agents that declares 
your season of prosperity. You have to, you have to come to that place. You have to come to that season. We are by you put all these things together and you say to God, thank you. As you're thanking God for what he has put in your life, thank God also for the man or the woman that he has been using from January to December to speak into your life. Very important. Rise up to your feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just give God thanks for the word you've heard. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every 